Well, Harry and Meghan's Netflix series, released to the world this morning, is packed with... Well, not really revelations, are they? It's sort of rehashed old revelations with a new twist. As it turns out, we've apparently been wrong all along. Britain is a nasty, racist hellhole where only magnificent Meghan stood up to all this. And the world's biggest victims are not the people of Ukraine or the people battling COVID or people struggling in a devastating cost of living crisis. No, the world's biggest victims right now are the Duke and Duchess of Netflix. And don't take my word for it. This promise of once you're married, don't worry, it'll get better. Once they get used to you, it'll get better. It, of course it'll get better. But truth be told, no matter how hard I tried, no matter how good I was, no matter what I did, they were still going to find a way to destroy me. Yeah, nobody set out to destroy you. Uh, you destroyed yourselves in this country with your ludicrous, hypocritical behaviour. Truth be told, what she just said is complete and utter garbage. Harry and Meghan's romance, engagement and marriage were all greeted with ecstatic joy by the British media, the public and the royal family that they've all now abandoned. That's the truth. Not Harry and Meghan's truth, but the actual truth. The first three hours of this uh, Netflix series paint a very different, far uglier picture of this country and our royal family. Eight days after the relationship became public, I put out a statement calling out the racist undertones of articles and headlines that were written by the British press. And I wasn't thinking about how race played a part in any of this. I genuinely didn't think about it. Some of the members of the family was like, right, but my wife had to go through that. So why should your girlfriend be treated any differently? Why should you get special treatment? Why should she be protected? And I said, the difference here is the race element. I sometimes call the Commonwealth Empire 2.0 because that is what it is. There is a huge level of unconscious bias. The thing with unconscious bias is it's actually no one's fault. But once it's been pointed out or identified within yourself, you then need to make it right. Yep, we're all racist, apparently. Sounds like a different country, but let's be clear, Britain's one of the most tolerant and multicultural nations in the world. We celebrated the glamorous modern flair of the new young royals. We eulogised the newly biracial monarchy as the fresh face of 21st century Britain. I wrote newspaper columns about it myself, including on the day of the wedding. The press and public only turned on Harry and Meghan when their behaviour became obnoxious, self-serving and rankly hypocritical. Sadly, millions of people around the world will watch this series and they'll believe it. They'll believe the smears about Britain and our monarchy, that we're a bunch of bigoted and hateful people. They even blamed Brexit for the racism which apparently was aimed at Meghan Markle, which is just completely absurd. But by far the most sickening part of this show for me was the constant use of Harry's late mother, Princess Diana, to stoke sympathy for Meghan. So much of what Meghan is and how she is is so similar to my mum. She has the same compassion, she has the same empathy, she has the same confidence. She has this warmth about her. I accept that there will be people around the world who fundamentally disagree with what I've done and how I've done it. But I knew that I had to do everything I could to protect my family. Grandma. Nothing says protecting a family like putting a kids in a reality TV series, does it? Having known both women, Princess Diana and Meghan Markle, I can say with absolute certainty they had nothing in common whatsoever. I couldn't think of two women more different. And when it comes to compassion and empathy, where's Meghan's been for her own father? She completely disowned him, as she did all her wedding, actually, before the wedding. As this series makes clear, he just suffered a stroke a few months ago. Miss Compassion hasn't even bothered to call her father to ask how he is. And the answer, as we'll find out tonight from his son Thomas, is he's not well at all. Harry's never even met the man whose daughter he married. Doesn't care. Mr Empathy, Mr Compassion. Yet this man, Thomas Markle, raised Meghan on his own for many years. That wasn't in the documentary. That was glossed over. That was ignored. Just like he is now. He lives 70 miles away from them. It's about an hour-long cab ride. Never seen his grand grandchildren. This show is packed with a kind of spurious 
claims and hypocrisy that have become the Sussex signature. We learned they began making videos about the heroic journey six months before their Netflix deal was even announced and right at the start of a pandemic that was killing thousands of people every day. Their only concern was their own situation. How mean everyone was being to them, not thousands of people dying in the streets. Clearly, this is all planned from the start. The show opens with the claim the royal family declined to comment, when in fact they say no one bothered to ask them. And of course, their biggest complaints are, as always, about the terrible media. Rarely do we have a holiday without someone with a camera, you know, jumping out of a bush or something. Within the family, within the system, the advice that's always given is don't react. There was always public pressure with its fair share of drama, stress, and also tears, and witnessing those tears. There's a lot of people who think yeah, they've got such a problem with, with paparazzi. Safety yeah. first. Worst case yeah. scenario, we're going from one garage to another. Yeah. Like, it's... Yeah. Paparazzi still harass people. It's amazing what people will do when offered a huge amount of money to hand over photographs, to create a story. Right. So, we had to flee the country for family privacy, says Harry as we watch a $100 million documentary in which he flaunts his young children and shares private text messages, intimate photographs for the entire world to see. When it comes to paparazzi, I had more paparazzi outside my house when I was forced to leave my old job for disbelieving Princess Pinocchio's lies than I saw actually outside their houses at any stage of this documentary. Maybe their mob scenes are to come. We haven't seen any so far. In fact, all their claims of paparazzi intrusion in the two trailers turned out to be nothing to do with them. They weren't even at many of the events which were depicted. So forgive me if I don't think this is all a load of BS. But frankly, the biggest problem with this series so far is that, like the Sussex themselves, is actually, it's dull, it's predictable, it's cliche-ridden, it's simperingly sycophantic. It's one long rendition of all their greatest whinges and a load of self-congratulatory nonsense. Harry and Meghan sold their royal souls to become reality TV stars, but they haven't got the charisma to carry their own sob story. They're now a grasping ex-royal version of the Kardashians, only with less class, less loyalty and less brains.